that we get to celebrate. Once every six years, we get to celebrate Christmas Eve on a Sunday, the day that we have already dedicated to honor and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so today we recognize the Prince of Peace. Let me read this scripture as a reminder to you out of Isaiah 9, 6, and then we'll get to the big idea and the main scripture for today. Isaiah 9, 6 says this, as Alex spoke to us earlier, and you've been learning through this Advent season. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now today, here's my big idea that I want you to walk away from this Christmas Eve service understanding is that because of Jesus, we have peace with God. Because of Jesus, we have peace with God. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into that this morning out of Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. It says this, and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I don't know if you would be when an angel showed up, but I think I would be. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And Pastor Larry reminded us of this, men and women, young and old. But let's continue to read. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Let's pray. Jesus, we pray that today you would teach us that you are the Prince of Peace. And God, that you would help us to understand what it looks like not just to experience the joy of the Christmas season, but a peace that is everlasting. To you be all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, and everyone said... So let me encourage you today that many people experience the joy of Christmas and at the same time miss their Prince of Peace. Notice that the scripture shows us in verse 10 that the news of the birth of Jesus would cause great joy for all the people. But then in verse 14, the angel and the heavenly host say this, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now he seems to be talking to two different audiences here. He seems to be saying this, the news is for everyone, but not everyone will receive the news. See, I believe that many people feel the joy of hearing the news of Christmas, but they miss the favor of God resting on them. And why? Because they do not receive for themselves the peace that comes from the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastor Larry reminded us that he wasn't just born in a manger, but he lived a perfect life and he died on a cross so that you could be reconciled, redeemed, redeemed, renewed, and restored. He is both the God that came and the God that is coming again. That's what we celebrate this Advent. Listen, if you leave Jesus in the manger, I promise you, you will experience the joy of Christmas. And by the time New Year's hits, you'll be wondering where your peace is. Wow. Your peace is resurrected. Your peace didn't only just die, but your peace is everlasting. And that peace is coming again for all those that surrender to his will. So let me encourage you today. If you don't know this peace, I want to remind you of a few things that Jesus did for you. The first is this. Jesus settled the debt of your soul. And I encourage you, not only did he settle the debt of your soul, but that means that you are not meant to hold on to shame. See, sin was a violation of God's law. And Ezekiel reminds us that the soul that sins shall die. But let me encourage you today that if you follow Jesus, that though your soul sins, Jesus can redeem, restore, renew, and revive what was meant to die. See, the Bible teaches us, oh, death, 
death, where is your sting? But how can you believe that unless you've experienced the life that is found in Jesus Christ? We don't just serve a baby. We serve a Messiah. We don't just serve a child. We serve an everlasting God. And I want to remind you today that there is no way to settle the shame that is in your soul. It will spread like cancer and it will ruin you and it will destroy you unless you bring it to the feet of Jesus. Because at the feet of Jesus, let me tell you, all things that you've done are undone in the name of Jesus. All things that have been done to you are undone in the name of Jesus. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've experienced, this Christmas, the reminder is this, that your peace comes not from where you've been, but the one that is with you today and forevermore. I want to encourage you, church, don't settle for joy, but experience the peace of God. See, not only did he settle the debt of our soul, but he paid every price that was needed for our sins. So receive Emmanuel, God with you. He has given his whole life for you. I want to remind you that you could not satisfy the wrath of God, but Jesus satisfied it for you. Jesus satisfies the wrath of the Father so you don't have to cover up your needs, your wants, your desires by wishing that something under a tree might satisfy a longing in your soul. Like Alex reminded you, can I tell you, church, the greatest gift was given on a tree, not under a tree. And that gift that was given on a tree satisfies everything that you've done that has separated you from the love of God. Romans 5, 9 reminds us, since we have now been justified, justified by what? The blood of Jesus. How much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God? Can I encourage you? Many of you come into church and you think God is still mad at you for what's wrong with you. But can I teach you today, as Joel reminded you last week, do not separate the Trinity. He is one God, three persons. He is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the Son, what he decided that though you deserve his wrath, though his emotion towards you is anger because sin is wrong, he chose to act in the greatest act of love. He didn't choose to resent you or deny you or separate himself from you. Many of us come this Christmas knowing that when we've done wrong, our parents have abandoned us. Many of us know that when we've done wrong, people have have left us or forsaken us. But can I encourage you today that the Bible teaches that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. And you need to come to the foot of the cross on this Christmas Eve, not just a manger, but a cross where your sins were laid out so the wrath of God could be satisfied and you could receive the greatest gift that has ever been given. Church, I want to remind you that God loves you and he's for you. So many people on Christmas experience a deep depression and they hide it with a fake smile and they believe that if they spend enough money, somehow the pain will go away. And then what are you left with at the new year? Credit card debt. Can I get an amen? And the world continues to go in debt for the debts that they have, but Jesus has paid the price. Can I encourage you and remind you that nothing like Christmas exists? Nothing like Christmas exists. Why? Because it started the time clock of you receiving your eternal salvation. Though you were a sinner, you were saved by grace. Come on, somebody needs to say that over their soul today. You've been beating yourself down. You've been depressed. You've been diminishing the work of God in your life. And you've forgotten that Jesus came for you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yes, not just me, not just the people that you see that you want to be like. Jesus came for you, the last, the lost, and the least, the orphan, the widow, and the hungry. Anybody felt hungry for something before? Anybody felt like they were thrown out or left for dead? Well, let me tell you, you're in good company because the shepherds were the last, the lost, and the least, and they were the first to receive the good news. 
Jesus teaches that the first will be last and the last will be first. In the kingdom of God, family, you are valuable. You are not defined by your brokenness. You are not defined by what you've done nor what's been done to you, but rather what Jesus did for you. And you have to start living by the truth of Christ and not what you've been speaking over your life this Christmas Oh man, I, I, I just have been so burdened by how many people have come to me and said, Pastor, I want to give up. Pastor, I don't know if I can. Pastor, I just don't know. Pastor, Pastor, pa and let me encourage you that Jesus is your ever present help in time of need. He's a peace that surpasses understanding. There's no magic trick in following Jesus. It's simply surrender and submission. Can I, can I encourage you today? You know, many of us try to live by our own strength and our own might, and we do things in the name of Jesus, and then we act like we are the Lord of our lives. Pastor Joel last night reminded us that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you say that with me? Jesus Christ is Lord. That means that he controls your life. That means he decides what you do. That means you have to look to the gospels to recognize not only was he born, but he lived. And that way that he lived showed you a way to live. So church, light and life. In light of Jesus's life, you can have joy for a season or you can have peace for eternity. You choose which you want. I'll tell you, the world will try to satisfy you with hot cocoa and Christmas songs right after Halloween. I don't know what happened to Thanksgiving. They got rid of it, but Christmas starts early now. And the world is trying to cover and numb the pain of life, but Christmas was not meant to numb, it was meant to heal. Somebody needs to know that this morning. You need to understand that God doesn't want to numb your pain. He wants to heal your life. So how do you do these things? The first thing you can do is you can decide to either surrender or fight God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 reminds us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and what? He will make your path straight. You cannot, you cannot fight the world. Can I tell you? Man, it feels like you can fight when you're young, but the older you get, you realize, man, there's a whole lot of fighting to do. And when you wake up in the morning, I, I don't know about you, but now I'm in my mid thirties and I hear creaking and cracking that I didn't know existed in my body. I thought it was my wood floors, but then I realized it was me. And the older I get, the more I realize that I've been losing the battle against the world. But you know what I lean on? I lean on this truth. I don't fight the world. I serve the one that has overcome the world. So family, I want to remind you today that you are not meant to fight the world. Yes, I know you're strong. Yes, I know that you're tough. Yes, I know you've been through some stuff, but you are not strong enough. You are weak and you will fail and you will find yourself broken and defeated. But in surrender, you will have victory in Jesus. See, here's the next thing you can do is you can either med medicate or find tranquility. You know, my wife constantly loves to remind me, she was a pharmacy technician, that all that medicine does for me is numb the things that are happening inside of me. She, I love Tylenol and ibuprofen for those aches and those creaks and those pains as I get a little older. Can't play basketball without my ibuprofen anymore, let me tell you. But you know what? It is only numbing what I'm feeling. And for us, so many of us on Christmas use this beautiful holiday to celebrate the birth of tranquility to do what? To numb the pain that we have. But family, let me remind you that numbing the pains of life by addictions like drugs or alcohol or pornography or obsessiveness or anger or resentment, these things do not take away the pain. It only hides them. But I want to encourage you today, by the wounds of Jesus, you are healed. By the wounds of Jesus, you are healed. Isaiah 53, 5 prophesies about this baby that was born to do what? But 
he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, come on somebody, we are healed. So lastly, you can do it your way or you can follow the way. You can do it your way or you can follow the way. Your way, can I just say it, sucks. That's right. I'm a pastor, and I said your way sucks. See, your way leads to death. You, you think uh, emotionally. You think momentarily. You can't see what's ahead of you. You don't know how things end. You are not omniscient, omnipotent, nor are you omnipresent. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he reminds us no one comes to the Father but through him. So are you going to do it your way or are you going to do it Jesus' way? Are you going to do it your way or are you going to start following the way? You're going to make resolutions at the new year. And let me tell you, unless you let Jesus give you understanding and the spirit to fill you with power, you will find yourself in the same place that you started making the same resolution in 2024 that you made in 2023. And half the resolutions we make don't matter in the long run anyways. Because we live in light of eternity. See, God's way is an eternal way. Our way is a give it to me now kind of way. And let me tell you, his way is better. How many of you have been walking with Jesus for a couple of years or a couple of decades and know that what you want is not what you need? Can I get an amen? Let me tell you, young people in the room, and I, I, feel so, I feel so seasoned in the Lord, I can say young people in the room. Young people in the room, let me tell you, your way is not better. I've been there. I thought my way was better. And then I came crawling back to Pastor Larry, and he said, didn't Jesus tell you, Sean? Let me remind you, you can follow your way or the way. So let me challenge you. Let me really challenge you. Because it's cute to come to a Christmas service on a Sunday, but it's submission to say, God, change me. It's submission to say, God, I don't want to live the way that I'm living. God, you still have things to do in me. Now, some of you might be coming and going, well, I've already been walking with Jesus. There's more sanctifying for you to do. There's more following for you. Let me challenge you today. Let the peace of Christ and the favor of God rest on you. I want to remind you that Christmas decorations will get put away, but the cross of Christ lives forever. Right. He has done the most miraculous gift. I, I remember years ago, the Lord awakening me to this truth. He reminded me, he said, Sean, for you, Christmas starts the day after Thanksgiving and ends that first week in January where you lazily put your lights away. And I realized this shift that was happening in my life. I would put the lights away. The glory of the gifts that I got would begin to fade. And I would find myself settling into what I viewed as normalcy in my life. And then in 2008, I gave my life to Jesus. And instead of settling back into normalcy, I started a new path with God. I, I realized that the work of the cross was to dwell in my heart forever. What I realized was I was doing it my way, but now I wanted to do it Jesus' way. What I realized was that I was experiencing the good news for a season, and it was numbing the pain of life. I felt so happy for a couple of weeks, but now I feel a joy that is everlasting. Now I feel a peace that surpasses understanding. Now I've seen God move in and through my life in ways that I've never thought possible. Not because of my strength, not because of my resolutions, not because my heart grew a few sizes that day, no. I died to myself and I became alive in Christ. Family, when's the last time 
you killed something on Christmas. When's the last time you killed the resentment that you'd been carrying all year? When's the last time you killed the anger that you have towards a fellow believer? When's the last time you, you, you killed the depression that you've been experiencing and you finally gave that grief over to God and really went through a lamenting process of saying, God, I, I can't hold it, but you sure can. When's the last time you killed something on Christmas? And I'm not talking about the ham that you're about to cook. I'm talking about something in here so that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords could be your everlasting Prince of Peace. I wanna challenge you this Christmas. Why? Because God challenged me and it changed my life forever. Would you bow your heads with me? I wanna pray over you. Lord, we pray that you would be our everlasting peace. You are the Prince of Peace. And we acknowledge that only Jesus can bring us the peace we were all made to experience. Father, forgive and correct us when we try to fight or medicate our way to peace. I pray, oh God, today, that we may be counted as those on whom his favor rests. May our peace be from the Prince of Peace and it be everlasting and may it come by way of surrender and submission. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you've not given your life over to this Prince of Peace, if you would be honest and say, Sean, I dread the day I have to put the lights away. If you would be honest and say, you know what, I've, I've never killed anything on Christmas. I, I, I've been living by trying to fill this hole that exists inside of me. Well, I wanna remind you today that Jesus' peace is the only peace that can fill what's missing. If that's you and you wanna surrender your life wholly and fully, I, I can't think of a better day than a Sunday on Christmas Eve for you to give your life to Jesus. If there's anyone that wants to surrender with every head bowed and every eye closed. Would you just raise your hand with mine? I wanna see you right where you are. I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody take a moment just to praise God right now? Thank you, Lord, for surrendered lives. I wanna finish out this prayer so... We can get to a blessing, but for those of you that raised your hand, Daniel, Pastor Joel, somebody would love to meet you at the back and pray with you and remind you that this is a lifetime thing. No putting away the lights, no pretending for a season, but fully surrendering for a lifetime to this child that can change you forever. So God, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. We say the yes and amen to the story that's been being lived out for thousands of years. A child has come, a son is given, and he is Emmanuel, God with us, life changer, hope bringer, everlasting father, prince of peace. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And all of God's people said, amen. Take a moment to give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. We want to bless you as you go. I want to remind you that uh, the Lord is with you. I want to pray this blessing over you if you would stretch out your hands in a posture of reception. This Christmas Eve, may you not settle to have joy for a season, but submit to an eternal peace. This Christmas, Church, over everyone in the sound of my voice, I pray that you go in the powerful truth that unto us the Savior has been born. To us the Son of God has been given and he is our peace. May the favor of God rest on you because you are submitted to Jesus. May you go in that favor. God bless you. And amen. We love you, church. Merry Christmas. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.